Okay, everybody, Mr. Ragowitz here. So our learning target for today is we're going to build on what you did yesterday. So yesterday you worked on adding fractions. So today I can subtract fractions and mixed numbers. Probably we're going to do a lot more with mixed numbers than fractions, so it's really critical to get that in there. Also remember, let's go ahead and put the date up here in the corner so you're sure exactly when we're doing this. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and do a couple examples real quick. Just like you learned with addition of fractions, is you must have a common denominator. So we are going to go ahead and we're going to start with a simple one to begin with, and we'll do mixed numbers first. So 3 and 2 fifths minus 1 and 1 third. Now I'm the kind of person that with common denominators and all of that, I like to set mine up vertically. So I'm going to just move it over here, 3 and 2 fifths. I'm going to give myself some space, 1 and 1 third. So the next thing I need to consider is what's my common denominator for 3 and 5. Best one to work with, lowest common denominator is 15. So I'm going to convert both of them by 15. I need to be fair to both fractions. So we're going to use the big one. We're going to multiply 5 by to get 15, 3 here, 3 here, 2 multiplied by 3, 6 fifteenths for my equivalent fraction. But we're going to multiply 3 by to get 15, 5, 5, 1 times 5 is 5. Now I have two fractions that have a common denominator, 6 fifteenths minus 5 fifteenths, 1 fifteenth. And then my whole number is 3 minus 1 is 2. So there's my difference of the two. Okay? Now, that should be pretty straightforward. Let's look at one that's maybe a little bit more complicated. 8 and 7 ninths minus 5 and 2 twelfths. So, same deal. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to step mine up vertically. That's a personal preference. So now I need to think what is going to be my common denominator. Give me a second to think about it. So my common denominator for 9 and 12 is going to be 36. Smallest number that they have in common. So I'm going to consider and go, okay. I would multiply 9 by 4 to get 36. Same thing by the numerator. 28, 36. What I multiply 12 by to get 36? 3, 3, 2 times 3 is 6. So 28, 36 minus 6, 36. 22, 36. Make the whole numbers 8 minus 5. Anything you notice. Okay, my difference is not completed. I need to simplify the fraction, and I know that 2 is a factor of both 22 and 36, so my final answer is going to be 11 eighteenths. There's my final answer. Okay, so both of those work pretty well. Not always do things happen. So what we need to do now, is I'm going to consider one like this. What if I had 18 minus 7 and 3 sevenths? Is there anything that you notice? 
It's a big deal in this problem that the 7 and 3 7 is a mixed number, has a fraction of them. 18 is only a whole number. So the first thing we're going to do is we're still going to set it up vertically. This is the problem that we like to call danger number one. And the danger in this is that the 18 doesn't have a fraction showing them. I can't just bring this down. There's nothing to subtract it from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a fraction. I'm going to borrow from the 18. I'm going to borrow one whole, so that makes it 17. And then for the fraction, remember our rule for subtracting fractions is we must have a common denominator. So if I borrowed one whole, and this is 3 sevenths, one whole in this one is going to be 7 sevenths. Now I have a fraction that I can subtract from. So I do 7 sevenths minus 3 sevenths. We end up with 4 sevenths. 17 minus 7 is 10. Take one final look. It will not reduce. 10 and 4 sevenths is my difference. Okay. So I've gone ahead and flipped over my paper. If you need the room, go ahead and do that. But I'm going to show you what we're going to call danger. Number two. All right. So what I want to subtract is I have 11 and 1 eighth minus 3 and 5 twelfths. Okay, looking good so far. I like mine vertical. 11 and 1 eighth minus 3 and 5 twelfths. So far so good. I need a common denominator. So for 8 and 12, I'm going to go with 24. And that means what we're multiply 8 by to get 24. 3. Numerator 3. What would I multiply 12 by to get 24? 2. 2. 5 times 2 is 10. Okay. So what I would like you to do is take a look. Everything is perfect so far. I have been amazing. Is there something you notice? What you've noticed is that I cannot subtract this fraction from this. We can't do 3 minus 10. We don't do negatives with this. So what I need to do is I need to figure out, is there a way that I can create a larger fraction? And I can. I can borrow from the whole number again. So instead of 11, now I have 10. And how much did I get from that? Well, I want a common denominator. These are 20 fourths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one whole, which is 24 20 fourths. Put those two together. Now I have 27 20 fourths. And you and I both know that's an improper fraction. But it doesn't matter because I'm just going to use it to subtract. 27 20 fourths minus 10 20 fourths. Now I can subtract. I get 17 20 fourths. Don't forget the whole numbers. 10 minus 3 is 7. One last step. Can I simplify this? No. I'm done. Okay. Watch out for those dangers.